this is a private sale and this is considered a wild plant. In other words, the site isn't prepped uh, for uh, planting trees. But as you can see, this guy is a great steward of the forest and he's really cleaned up his woods really nice. And uh, for the two days, I'll put in uh, 2,400 trees for him. And these are uh, uh, all containerized trees. As you can see, they're uh, contained in their own earth system. These will grow right after they're put in the ground. Some people will buy the bare roots. And as you can see, the difference between the two, the bare roots are bigger. And uh, the downside to the, these guys is the root system. You got to really be careful that they're all in the ground when you plant them. Um, and the bare, trip, bare roots have a, like a three year cycle. The first year they seep, creep, and then grow. So for three years, they're kind of not doing much. Where these, you plant them right away and they go, but they are smaller. Oh, this is uh, grown in uh, styrofoam cubes. So there's 200, uh, 250 in a cube, and these are grown right straight in the uh, outside earth system, uh, outside in a farm. These are grown in Bedora. These are grown actually in Canada. So I thought I would show you the example of people say, well, this is bare root and this is containers. The county has gone, this is a private job, but the county has gone to more containerized versus the bare root also, just because they start growing the minute you put them in the ground. So. Kind of nice, better success. Then you don't have to worry about J-rooting because if one of these roots sits outside the hole as you plant it, it'll dry it out and kill the tree. And these are nice to plant. You don't have to worry about the root system at all. And so uh, these are very fast and very easy to plant. I really like these trees versus the bare roots. And this is the main root that you really got to protect here, that, this one right here. So yeah, you got to know all this stuff. And as you can see, I use a, a sharpshooter shovel when I plant. And uh, some guys use a planting bar, some guys, not very many who use a hoedad anymore, but uh, I use uh, what's called a sharpshooter. This is my medium weight shovel. I have two shovels. I have the lightweight here because I'm in sand. And then this is my medium weight shovel. And it's just a number 14 spade, but then I hire a welder to weld this metal plate on the back. And then the strength in it, we weld it here, or I asked them to weld it. First one that I uh, had this friend make for me, it snapped right here. And so then after that, we decided, well, we need to make it stronger, more durable. And it adds weight to the shovel, but there's no flex or bend to the shovel when you plant it. So when you hit the ground and move it, the earth moves, not the shovel. There's no flex. So it's a heck of a garden tool also. But they call these sharpshooters and I own three sharpshooters. This is my medium weight one. I have my lightweight one out there, and then I have my heavy weight, which is uh, more for rocky soil or heavy soil. That's at home. I grind these down quite often, and these I've just wired brushed down each night. So far this year, I've only had one bad plant site, which was a lot of rocks, and I literally had to take the bends out of it, each plant. So it was kind of getting depressing and taking a long time, to, but, but that was in the Lake of the Woods. And here comes our own one. Well, this is what Monty planted three years ago. And the progression, the growth is just remarkable. When the storm came in here, it came in straight micro bursts. So you had these down drafts that came in. And it would take out an area like this and lay everything down. It wasn't like straight line winds that everything just went down. There were these micro bursts. So you have seven acres that lost timber but look at how this has come in now these are all seedlings that monty planted the seed that are on the ground that was under that canopy are all laying there dormant so these seeds are now going to start sprouting you're going to get natural regeneration occurring along with our plantings when you do it manually instead of by machine you can place your trees where you want them and not wind roam. So when this comes up, it's going to look natural. And as tree plantations, when they put them in machines, it looks so mechanical and there's rows. And we want it to look as natural as possible. So, you know, 40 years from now, it's going to look like Mother Nature put in this stand of trees as opposed to just like a cornfield. So the stewardship of putting your trees back is really important and, and that's a progression that regardless of a storm 
you're still always planting, putting in varieties and replenishing what has been lost just through natural mortality. He is just really, really one of the best. And he appreciates what he's doing. I mean, look what he's, you know, a lot of these trees were planted back when the old owner owned it back in the 40s and 50s. And that's what stewardship's all about. It's, it's carrying it on. A lot of this would have regenerated itself, but he's really customizing it really nice. So he's really got a nice diverseness even with the shrubs here at this landing here for the grouse. And uh, he didn't get greeted by the grouse this morning. I'm surprised. There's a grouse that every time you open that gate and stuff, it comes out and like looks at you and wonders, what's going on here, guys? And so that's kind of fun about out here. And out here, as you heard earlier, all the geese coming into the lake. I really love to hear that. When you're out here working, you really get in tune what's around you. You really can hear stuff that you may not normally notice. Uh, it's kind of fun. Well, as you can see, I switched to left hand now. And when I learned to tree plant, I learned, uh, the guy taught me, his name was Norm Moody, said if you want to be a good planter, learn to do left and right handed. And uh, so I did. And a lot of the planters that just stick to be right-handed will take the trees when they're done with one and move them from one to the site to the other side of the bag. I don't do that. You lose trees, they fall out, it takes time. So I learned to plant both left and right-handed. I'm slower left-handed, but then my body lasts a little longer. I found out that uh, early on that uh, you grab your shovel by the shaft here and slam it because if you grab it by the handle like this and slam it you get all that pressure here on the top of your forearms and you get terrible tendonitis where here you now your arm is turned and you don't get that slam slam and uh boy i tell you one thing you get tendonitis just once and you'll you'll learn to grab her down by here and uh being tall is not a good thing but thank goodness so far my back has been kind to me and I've been able to actually last 30 years. And the trick with the trees is to get them at the right depth. And this is where they came out of the soil, so that should be how deep you should go, is right here. So every tree I grab, I grab at the height that I want it to hit the ground. Um, and that's, that's quite important too. Yeah, my first site I planted this year was uh, up in Zippo Bay. Never been up there. And I planted Jack 2000 Jack Pine up there. The rockiest soil I think I've ever planted in. Yeah, so this is a, a year that I've really planted a wide variety of species for private people so far. I've dropped, what, 7,400 I counted this morning. I planted in the last week. And I have one more contract, which I'll fill tomorrow and be done. I was looking at my counts, and uh, that will be the least amount of trees I've ever planted. Even the very first year I started, and I started, we started as a team. We worked in the forest as a team. And you had your own individual boxes. The first year I learned to plant, I did 8,000. And so this year I'll hit about 78, 77, 7,700. So this will be the least. So my first year eight now, hopefully my last year. There's no, I wasn't gonna plant this year, but there's so many uh, private individuals that bought a lot of trees and a lot of work and contacted me and said uh, please help us out and so uh, yeah I did that for him so Monty how many trees do you estimate that you've planted in your uh, career well I knew you'd ask me that and so I looked on my calendar and so far not counting this year I have 740,000 trees yeah 740,000 so that's that's a few trees and that's uh, private and county majority of course is county um, in the early days uh, 
uh, we planted uh, spring and fall and I would usually contract between like 24 to 28,000 in the spring and then maybe 15 to 18 in the fall because fall work for me is a lot hectic they're a lot busier and so I'm really not my work doesn't allow me to go out and do a lot and uh, we did that for 12 seasons and then the county um, realized that a lot of the trees that we're planting in certain areas uh, in the fall the uh, as the frost came out it'd kick out the trees and so then they stopped doing that and they only do a spring plant now so now in the fall um, either they'll sp uh, spray plant skid or bud cap and I've been a bud capper and a sprayer for them ever since then so that's what I do in the fall no planting just bud capping and spraying and I've done more bud capping on trees than I've planted because <laughs> I'll do about 100 acres so you're talking maybe a 80 to 100,000 trees a, a fall of bud capping where you take a little piece of paper and staple it over the top of the tree so yeah I've got my numbers up there a lot of touching of trees and uh, I'm sorry I'm not slowing down for you or working with you as much I'm planting till 10 11 and then I'm going to work by noon and work until 8 or 9 tonight so this is a, obviously my second job and this technique is called sweep in the heel so if you got a lot of stuff in your way if I was just to slam my shovel in there sticks and uh, um, the soil will get in your eyes and I tell you I've I've had a dry seasons where I've had to wear safety glasses and they steam up yeah you can see how these white pines have just been nailed by the deer see the bud there's no bud on it it's just totally been eaten down so then we put these nets up and hopefully that will protect it yeah until it gets a certain height but I'm doing all red pine here today for bud and then as he has me come back in the fall and bud cap to protect them so. Yesterday morning we we're, were listening to sandhill cranes and this morning it's Canadian geese. And what we have is a site here with jack pines. And this is the uh, third time they've bud capped this site. Just because I've seen trees out here that have uh, three, three pieces of paper on it. And uh, when you bud cap tree, you pick the dominant bud. And then you, uh, your bottom, the bottom staple is tight to the stem of the tree outside up high and that way you put up high one and if the deer take the first bite they'll get a staple in the mouth so that's a good thing and this one is a tree that's played out you can see that this section's dead and this one I'll take over so that's how she works bud capping keeps the deer and they're they're a smart animal the first year they'll keep them away from grabbing it and eating it and uh, and then after a while, they kind of get acclimated to it and get used to it, and then they'll come in and pull on it. If there's a lot of deer, what I'll do is I'll bud cap, and then they'll have the plant skid, the bud sprayers, come in and spray the paper, and that works like a charm. The deer can't figure that one out yet. The spray, the plant skid is pig's blood and vegetable fat mixed together. They mix. Uh, vegetable fat with it because it holds the blood it coagulates it and holds the blood onto the product whatever you spray it on they came out with plant skid and hoping that they could just spray it and leave it but it does wear off but when it's on the paper it gives that paper smell a death smell forever so the deer don't like it but you can see out here the success of these trees these are really I mean the success out here is awesome so it's obviously that the deer haven't been eating them there's, there's a few that I find along the edges over in here, 
that uh, the top bud, the dominant bud, is gone, and so the deer have started browsing. I've been very lucky this year, and that's all because of the weather. And I don't have to take the old paper off. I don't get paid more for it. I just take it off because uh, nobody likes a bow tie. So I figured the trees don't like it either. These are between three to four feet apart. Even some are being tighter than that. So that's why this site has a lot, a lot of trees. And as you saw my map, it's pretty easy to see where I've been. It's like a flag everywhere. And sometimes with jacks, they'll have multiple, multiple tops, so it's hard to determine which one to staple and protect. So then, what I do is I look for the biggest bud on the tree, and the forest growers will hire us to uh, bud cap um, Norway's jacks and especially white pines. Deer love white pines. It's like cotton candy. They plant jacks in here because they grow faster and that's what the mills want. And then I don't have to bud cap this one because this was over five feet, almost six, and I don't have to bud cap them when they're that tall. So it's one of the one of the rules I, I file when I sign up. I am a private tree contractor with the county. I bid against other planters, other staplers, other bud cappers, and um, uh, as far as fall work, I miss spraying plant skid. Yeah, it, uh, you learn a lot about trees and their willingness and wanting to live. You know, you find a tree that dies here and a section off takes over and kind of get in tune with every sound in the woods. And, and uh, even um, one, bud, one site that I uh, worked at here, I had a snapping turtle come out in the middle of the forest road and that was out by the power dam and uh, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't leave. He wouldn't, I beat my horn, I walked over and tried to encourage him to leave by grabbing a stick and he just was so stubborn he wouldn't leave. And so then I just grabbed my pack and walked around him and went to work and he was gone by the time I got done. And uh, this one's been nipped by deer. This is the reason why we bud cap because as you can see this tree has a nice diameter to it but yet the deer has nipped it several times and uh, taken off the dominant buds and a couple of its smaller ones. And so uh, this one is a typical of why I'm out here doing it. When you bud cap this, this section, it's hard to find really one that bud cap. And so I'll do that and hopefully the deer will leave it alone. Been such a funny um, season here since I've been out here because uh, uh, Friday, Two weeks ago, I was out here in a snowstorm and uh, I didn't last very long. I do, I do like two rolls, three rolls, go in my car, warm my hands up, come back out, do it. And I'm stubborn enough to a point where I wanted to get one pack. And when I say a pack of paper done, it's this full, this full, and before I leave to make it worth my gas money to come out here. But it was, it was blowing hard and it was snowing and, and uh, today I wish there was a little bit of wind because uh, yesterday the uh, black gnats are almost unbearable. Being tall is not necessarily good out here, especially for a tree planter because it's a whole lot of bending over. So that's why I have a very good heating pad at my house and I wear a back brace. And after 30 years, I need them. Bending over into debris and stuff has its price because already out on this site, I put a uh, piece of grass into my left eye and I know that I'll have to, uh, I was hoping that uh, whatever is in my eye would work itself out. But I know that when I'm done with this site, I'll have to go in. So one of the many hazards here, 
course I have some nice safety glasses in my truck, but This is uh, nice to see such a great success out at this site. Being up here, I've seen tons of bald eagles. I've seen a lot of bald eagles out here. The most I see out here are swans. The swans out here, there's a lot of potholes out here that are secluded and hidden including one that's back in there that I was just at this morning. And uh, it's fun to hear their call, fun to hear them talk. When I was here on Tuesday, a week ago here, I kicked up a bear over in that back corner. And uh, I had a laugh because I had my headset on and I could hear this huge rush. And uh, I looked up and all I could see is a, this back dairy air side and uh, dropped down to my knees and took the headset off and just sat and watched and watched as I could hear him rushing through the woods, running away from me just as fast as I was as scared to him. So when I was capping there the past two days in that back corner, I kind of didn't bring my, didn't wear my headphones with me those days. Yeah, there was one year I was planting and you get in this rhythm and you, a pattern, and uh, this is tree planting. And uh, I was bending over going, bending over going, and all of a sudden I turned around and there was a, a deer smelling my backside. And uh, me jumping made him jump, or her jump. So you know, this is one of the first trees that were planted out here, and this is a Norway. And this was the trees that were first planted in the site that didn't succeed, but but there are quite a few that are still out here, so that's kind of nice to see. But I don't have to protect these, so not in my contract. And you can see another one eight feet away right there that's still alive. So there's still a few of the big old Norways. The downside of it getting warm like this, you can see the top bud of some of these have a little sap-like glistening to them. And it gunks up my sapler faster. It's really difficult to uh, say, oh my gosh, how can I ever get this done within 45 days? And um, because of the road, you just uh, staple it in sections. Like when I came to this back section here, I went, first day I went right down the middle, all the way to the back. I finished everything to the east yesterday, and now I'm starting here on this section here today. So, little victories. Yeah, it's nice to see so few trees being browsed on. That's really nice. And uh, as you can see, as you came in, you saw a lot, of, a lot of trees already done. So probably tomorrow I'll have done 60,000 out on the site already. You know, you think about this for me, I've nine years capping, eight years, 11, that's not quite 30, but get to know it pretty good. 